Hello there, I'm Ludwig and this is SQL Bootcamp Online, the two-minute SQL series where I'm addressing the most common questions and answers regarding SQL Server. Now this episode will be an exception because normally all of the episodes in this uh, in this YouTube channel are without any post-productions, without any cuts, without any editing whatsoever. So make sure you'll subscribe to see all of the rest of the videos that I have ready for you. But in this episode, in order to save your precious time, I will prepare, uh, I will uh, edit this video afterward to speed up the process of what you will be seeing on the screen. But because that today's question is how to install the second, third, fourth, another instance of SQL Server. You may remember that SQL uh, is divided in instances and we talked about that on different uh, on different video. This is the live coding, this is a demo, this is a presentation on how to perform this action on the living organism on our virtual machine. So this is what we'll focus on today, but again, make sure that you've seen the other video in order to make 100% sure that you are absolutely uh, absolutely clear on what instances are and what instances aren't, especially if you have any uh, Oracle um, Oracle experience. So without further ado, what you need to do, the first step is just to go to SQL Server uh, website on Microsoft.com, go to Downloads, the DAM, and download the version of your SQL Server that you want to get and install right now. Again, since we'll be working on Windows uh, 10 machine, again, this is one of those uh, is that Windows 10? Yes, it is a Windows 10. Uh, we do have also a, um, a video on how to check your version, how to check your edition of SQL Server, but right now I want to download the developer edition. I already uh, did that a moment ago, so I do have it in here, and I will launch this installer in here. Now, I am installing the same um, software basically that I've installed before because I do have the running version of SQL Server. Let me prove it to you. I do have my, let's say, uh, SQL Server Configuration Manager and the Configuration Manager, this little snap-in, will show me that I do have a running SQL Server in here, right? So if I launched SSMS, let me just launch SSMS in here real quick. Ta da by uh, launching my SSMS again, I'll be uh, able to connect to this uh, SQL Server just like that and review the contents of it. And from the video on um, installing the SQL Server for the first time, you'll learn how to launch those services, how to connect to the uh, SQL Server, and so on and so forth. So right now you can see that the connection were, went perfectly fine. I do have some databases in here. Some of those databases may even uh, not have any name or maybe have a skull in the name uh, of the database. These are some Easter eggs that I also have separate videos of. But right now what we want to do is we want to install another instance of SQL Server. So how do we do that? Well, again, I just need to go to my uh, I just need to go to my installer, choose the type of the um, installation I want to perform. Well, let's just go with the basic again to see what will go on here. I will get the information right away saying that, hey, one or more SQL Server 2019 instance were detected to install the second instance, click accept. To perform an in-place upgrade to the new CTP, click previous and then custom, right? So again, I already have the installer already uh, or realize that I already have my uh, instance already uh, installed. So I'll just go with accept and I'll be asked where to install my software. This will be still the, mm, the uh, default uh, catalog, the default folder. I'll just hit install and what SQL Server installer is doing right now, it's acquiring the setup files, which means that it's basically downloading the install package because as you may have noticed, the installer that I have in here, it's just 5.8 max, so it's super small file. The installer itself uh, allows you to choose the correct version of your SQL Server and then pulls the package, whether you'll be going with the custom version or the uh, basic version from internet. So you need to be connected if you want to install, if you want to create a, 
uh, ISO file if you want to create an installer that will have all of its feature already built in without being connected to the internet you can do that using that installer as well but in the with the first try you do need to be online so again as I said in this particular video I'll just keep it running till it will finish so let me just put the fast forward right now and I'll see you in a sec All right, we are back. And as you can see, the installation has completed successfully. And what I'm getting in here is the information about the instance name. As you can see, this is MSSQL Server 01, just like that, because we went with the basic installation. We didn't, we were not asked about anything. I wanted to show you in this video how to go with the absolutely easiest way and just hit next, 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 finish, right? And that would be it. But again, having a SQL server that's called uh, the, or having the default uh, instance that is always called the same as your, that it can be reached through the same string as your uh, system itself, uh, as your operating system itself. And then having the instance name of MSSQL server 01 may not be the, absolute best way of addressing all of your codes and all of your uh, all of your documentation so on and so forth so what we can do from here is we can hit customize and if we were if you if we went to this customize customize button in here it will take us from the basic installation to the custom installation wizard or after we've already acquired all of the installation files so what we uh, may want to do in here is we went, may want to use the microsoft update to check for updates later on once uh, our software will be installed then i can go ahead and reach for that uh, update server right now again it may be disabled or maybe i don't have any services so i don't want to worry about that right now that am i want to have the access to the setup files again i do have the warning regarding a uh, windows firewall again and the windows firewall is enabled and in order to make sure that i will be able to reach to this uh, reach this uh, database from the outside world even from within my uh, network, I need to make sure that I will um, provide the proper pro ports and those ports will be opened. Then I'll hit next. I'll be asked about the installation type. And as you can see right now, I do see that I can either add features to those two uh, already installed uh, instances of SQL Server, I have MS SQL Server or MS SQL Server 01, or I can perform the a custom installation from here. So that's what I want to do. That I'm, I'll hit next. I will go that and select that this will be a developer edition. As you can see, it can be an evaluation. An evaluation means that you will have uh, 180 days to just check your uh, SQL Server. Uh, enterprise uh, edition just like that or you may want to go with the developer edition which is free but not for the production use and express edition which is also free also for the production as well for the production uh, use but very limited so I'll just go with the developer I'll accept all of the license terms that I've read very carefully and I'm fine with all of them. I'll hit next. I will choose my features. All of these steps we're taking right now happened automatically for uh, automatically for my basic install for MSSQL Server 01. I do want to have the database engine. I may not want to have the replication. This would be a very simple install right now. I want to have the data quality services. I may want to be able to build some um, some uh, data warehouses or not. Uh, but what I will install in here is that I may want to install, here we go, the integration services. Just like that, we'll have separate videos on all of them. I'll hit next right now and feature rules. 
And here we go. What we need to do is we need to choose our instance name and instance ID. Now, please note that the default instance will always be called MS SQL Server, and you can uh, refer to this instance in the, with the, using the very same name as your operating system. Now, what we can do from here is we can say, hey, I want to create a named instance. For example, for my development platform or the test platform or whatever, whatever kind of environment you're creating in here. And of course, the instance ID should also be unique. So you will be able to uh, refer to it. Oops, one more time. Development development and boom if I'll choose this instance ID then with all of the binaries on my hard drive whenever I'll be looking for all of my default locations of the files and the databases and the log files and so on and so forth they'll be referred to MSSQL 15 that's the mm, engine version for SQL Server 19 dot and there will go your instance ID. So in my case, it's dot development, just like that. I'll hit next. I can configure my server right now on the very next page. I do have an information about the accounts that I will be using on for each one of those services that I'm installing here. So for my SQL Server agent, for SQL Server database engine, for the integration services and the browser, as you can see, I cannot change that because the browser is already installed. When I was installing my previous instance in here, I'll just go next from here. I do have my database engine configuration where I should provide the information about the authentication mode, whether I want to in, uh, allow the SQL Server mode right away or not. I may want to add myself as a, a SQL Server administrator. Otherwise, I will not get this unrestricted access to my server. So this is something worth remembering. I can configure all of the data directories, the location of my or configuration of my TempDB uh, database on how uh, many logical CPUs I can be using here, limit the memory, enable file stream. So again, on each one of those um, of those tabs, I do have, I will have uh, separate uh, videos on this channel. So don't forget to subscribe. I'll go next. I will go next. I will have a little summary in here. Ta da -dum. I will hit install and I'll be again watching my installation progress. But as I am watching my installation progress right now, you should see the difference between going with the basic versus going with the custom installation process. If I go with the basic, I just hit next, 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 finish, and that's it. I don't do anything. The uh, uh, SQL Server instance is being installed without asking me any questions. On the custom uh, installation process, I am being asked about every single step, every single feature, every single setting for every single one of those features. So if you want to customize your installation in any way, this is exactly how you do that. Now, once my installation is finishing and it's getting all of the uh, all of the binaries and installing it the very same way as any other program is being installed. I'll take another quick look at my SQL Server Configuration Manager to see that right now I do have two instances running. The one is called MS SQL Server. Oh, sorry, this is the agent. So here we go. One is called MS SQL Server and the other one is called MS SQL Server 01. OK, so how do I connect to those two different instances? Well, again, remembering the name of this SQL Server instance, as you can see in here in my Object Explorer. Here we go. I am connected to the London client one. As it happens, this is exactly the name of my can I show you that real quick? Yeah, let me just minimize all of those windows. As it happens, this is exactly the name system information. Here we go. This is exactly the information about uh, of uh, the name of my uh, operating system. This is London Client 1, okay? All right, so if I'll just go in here and hit connect to the database engine, let me just disconnect first so you'll see that uh, process from the very beginning. I'll hit database engine. I want to connect to the very same server that I'm working on right now. Tadam, I'm here. I could address this server as localhost. Localhost. Hit connect. 
Ta-da, this is exactly the same server. You can see that I have exactly the same databases. It's the same server that I'm looking at from different perspective. I should also be able to connect to it as just a dot. Hit connect, ta-da, again, this is the same server. I'm op I've opened the three connections to the very same server at the same uh, at the same time. So what I want to do is I want to disconnect from each one of them. Boom. Or maybe just leave the uh, client one in here. So you can see that I have those databases in here. And what I want to do is I want to create another connection to the London client one. London client one. But I want to connect to MS SQL server 01 right now. I will hit connect. Ta-da. And you can see that another connection was created, but right now this is a different server. Now, how do I know that? Well, first of all, I do have this instance name in here. And then on top of that, if I created another database that I would call another database just like that, because that would be way easier to distinguish, another database. I'll hit OK. This database, uh, this database is empty, but you can see that this database is, was created in here. If I go to my uh, my default instance and refresh it, you see that I still have this unnamed database. I have the school database and I have SQL Bootcamp database. Again, SQL Bootcamp Online, this is a way for you to go when you want to really upgrade your game in uh, the SQL world. And then what you're seeing in here down below, it's MS SQL Server 01 instance, uh, something that's completely separate as we discussed earlier in the previous video. So even if I went ahead and stopped this MS SQL Server 01 instance, this ser service will be stopped. You will see that in just a moment, that right now I could uh, expand this database, but once this server is being stopped, I will receive an error in just a moment. You see that it's not expanding and on my regular server it works perfectly fine, just expanding the objects that are belong to this server. I can refresh this view. You can see that my SQL Server um, Management Studio Object Explorer is reaching to this server and waiting for it to respond with the proper information. In the meantime, my installation of the development uh, server already succeeded. If I refresh all of the services, I will get the information that I do have the SQL Server that is running, boom, the default instance, the SQL Server 01 that is stopped. You can see that I can't reach to it. It even made SSMS not responding for just a sec. And right now I do see the information that it failed to connect to server London Client 1 MS SQL Server 01. And yet my databases, boom, on the London client one, so on the default instance work perfectly fine, right? Now, if I'll go back in here, I do see that I have my development instance. What it means is that I can just go here, I can establish a new database connection to, not the clon clon London client one, but to my development Uh, environment on London client one. I'll hit connect and voila. You can see that right now I do see, let me just refresh that real quick. So you can see that it indeed doesn't work. The icon should change in just a moment, but down below I do see the development server, development instance. So again, each one of these is a different instance of SQL Server and you can have up to 50 of those different instances on each one of your uh, physical or virtual machines, all right? So again, I hope that once the SMS will... Uh, will mm, Wake up, here we go. Again, we cannot connect to this server because we cannot locate this um, instance that we specified in our query. So as you can see right now, again, this entire thing, boom, here we go. Uh, each one of those instances is absolutely independent and can have different uh, features. It can have different um, different services installed. It they can work independently as well, right? So this is something for you to consider whenever you're creating your environment. You don't need to have a separate virtual machine in order to uh, in order to create your new environment. You can just use the very same machine. You can separate your services by the instances. But again, it 
uh, always come down to the performance of all of those environments and whether you want to mix them all together on the same machine if you want to create a redundancy if you want to create higher availability solution then again of course you should separate those services but if you are just starting out and you want to prepare your environment for testing for development and for production as well even if it was just for the uh, training purposes then by all means instances are your way to go if you want to separate your business entities through the instances again it's way easier to manage uh, or to separate services if they are located on different instances that have different schemas in the database or even different databases within that same uh, within that same instance, right? So I hope it answered most of your questions regarding how to create a new instance of SQL Server within the same virtual machine. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel to get notified about new videos and they are not being scheduled in any way. So hit that bell in order to get notified. And I will see you in another episode. Thank you very much. And I'll see you, as I said, in another episode. Here's your subscribe button. Here's another video. See you there.